What's up? My name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and in today's video we're going to be continuing the ongoing series of setting up your own modded Minecraft servers. In my previous videos I've covered RL Craft, Valhizia 2 and some other mod packs. If you'd like to check those out check the playlist link in the description down below. But of course without further ado we're running through the featured mod packs on the Twitch launcher and in today's video we'll be creating a Sky Factory 4 server. So first of all make sure you have the Twitch launcher installed and head across to the mods tab at the very top. Then Minecraft, browse mod packs, and we'll either scroll down until we find Sky Factory 4, or you can search for it up here. After finding it, simply click on it. And if you don't already have the mod pack installed, simply click install. Then to download the actual server itself, we'll click download server pack. This will open up your browser and start a download immediately. Once this download's done, I'll place it on my desktop for ease of access. Opening up the zip on my desktop, we'll go ahead and select the folder that's inside of it and drag and drop it out to a place that we can easily get to, such as your desktop. After doing that, we can close out of the zip and delete it. Opening up the folder that we just extracted, we have all of the server files over here. And of course, we have a simple readme.txt that we can open up with Notepad if we'd like to see some info on what we need to do. And over here, we have some hardware notes. They recommend more than four gigs of RAM and a modern processor. Scrolling down, to get our server running, we'll need to run install.bat. After doing that, we'll accept the EULA, we'll scroll down more, and we'll be editing and starting server start.bat. And then below, they have some more info on accepting the EULA, if you're a bit confused, but I'll guide you through that here. So, closing out of the readme, all we need to do is simply double click and install.bat. Then run, and a black window will pop up, where we'll go ahead and download some files, and set up the server. I'll simply wait for this to finish. Once it's done, that black window will simply vanish. All we need to do is simply scroll down, locate server start.bat, and simply double click on it. We'll click run, and another black window will pop up saying starting Sky Factory 4 server. Some more files will generate, and eventually it'll disappear as such. When it disappears, we'll see eula.txt. Opening it up, we have eula equals false, Simply change this last line to Eula equals true. Hit Ctrl S to save and close out of it. Then the next time that you open up server start.bat, the server should start up normally as you'd expect. But before we do that, let's go ahead and configure our server so we have some more RAM in it. Simply locate settings.bat, right click on it and click edit. Then if you see this, click run and we'll see all of the text over here. What we'll do is we'll adjust the minimum amount of RAM that it can use and the maximum over here. How much RAM should you give the server? Well, they suggest at least four gigabytes, which we have over here. But how much can you give it? Well, simply open up Task Manager and head across to the Performance tab, then the Memory section, and we'll see exactly how much RAM we have. Now, of course, I have a ludicrous amount of RAM, 64 gigabytes. You'll probably have eight, 12, or 16. How much exactly can you give the server? Well, as much as possible, while still leaving space for your PC to run, and of course Minecraft, if you're going to be playing it on the same computer that you're hosting it on. What exactly does that mean? Well, of course, Windows and programs take up a little bit as is. You'll need some for the server, and of course, you'll need some for the game on top of that. Now, ultimately, you'd still like some extra headroom at the very top, just so you have some extra space to open up some more programs and continue using your PC as normal while playing the game and hosting the server. Because I have 64 gigs, I don't really need to worry about this, but of course, you should aim for a minimum of four gigs for the server itself and four gigs for the game itself. So of course, let's go ahead and change that. Over here, we have 4096M, which is a multiple of 1024M. This is one gigabyte, 1024 megabytes. Now, of course, you could leave it as such, or you can simply replace it with one capital G, meaning one gigabyte. This is the same as 1024M. And just for simplicity, we'll use it as such. So minimum RAM will set to 1G and maximum RAM is currently 4 gigs, i.e. 4G. I'm gonna go ahead and change 4G to 16 as that's the maximum amount of RAM that I'd like the server to use, 16 gigabytes. I'll hit Control S to save and we can close out of settings.bat. Then let's simply find server start.bat, double click on it, run, and our server will go ahead and start up as expected. This time it shouldn't crash out and we should have our server running. 
Now, of course, while I won't cover port forwarding in this video, it will be linked down in the description below if you need some assistance with that. And of course, once your server started up or in the process of starting up, we can go ahead and start up with the game as well. To do that, I'll simply head across to the Mods tab at the very top, then Minecraft, and we'll select Sky Factory 4. Simply click on it to open it up, and I'll be using the Settings icon in the top right. Simply click on it and click Profile Options. Upon doing this, we can uncheck Use System Memory Settings, and we can give it the exact amount of RAM that we'd like Minecraft to use. Now, of course, this is separate from the server. This is the actual game itself. Simply make sure you have enough of the game, the server, and your PC to work. Of course, because I have more than enough available, I'll give it the maximum that I can, 12 gigs. Okay, play. Once you see this over here, click play again, and we'll launch up the actual mod pack itself. The server is now completely set up, and we should be able to join it from our own local computer. And there we go. Let's head across to the multiplayer tab and add a server. And here we can go ahead and enter either localhost into the server address or 127.0.0.1 to join the server on our local computer. After adding it, we'll get our server name over here. Simply double click on it to open it up. And there we have it, we're on top of the spawn tree where we can go ahead and start playing as expected. Now, of course, once you have your server up and running, you may want to give yourself operator so you can go ahead and enter creative mode and do the rest of that fancy stuff. Well, simply pause the game, head across to your console and type in op followed by your username. Upon hitting enter, you'll give yourself op and you can go ahead and run commands like game mode creative to give yourself creative mode where you can go ahead and spawn in whatever you want and do things as you'd expect. Now, of course, once you've made progress in your world, you're probably going to want to save your world and close your server so you can shut off your PC or something like that. Well, to do that, simply disconnect from your server and head across to the console. In here, usually clicking the X in the top right corner should be enough to save and close the world. But of course, I like to be extra safe when I'm doing things like this. I'll simply type in save hyphen all and hit enter. This will go ahead and save the world. And once that's done, we can go ahead and type in stop and hit enter to gracefully bring the server to a close. There we go. Now, once that's done, we can open up the folder and simply run server.bat to start up our server once again. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. My name is Vintech Nobe here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.